Uh, moving right along, next up is uh, Bob Davidson with his uh, workshop tips, tools, uh, and techniques. Bob, welcome. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to share my screen. And let's play. So welcome to Workshop Tips and Tricks. Uh, this week, uh, well, again, I'm an old scenic designer, line designer, stuff like that. Tonight's episode is measuring up rulers, scales, and squares. Um, a lot of this is going to be applicable to if you're doing bench work or, you know, bigger things in your workshop, but um, there's enough that's related strictly to model building, I think. So first we're going to look at rulers, and really there's two kinds that we use. We use tape measures. This is a standard tape measure. I love Harbor Freight because they used to give things away for free, and we all know how we all feel about free. One thing with a tape measure to be aware of is the end, the little piece on the end. Those are riveted in and they actually, they move, they're designed to move because the thickness of the hook, whether you're hooking it over the end of a board or sticking it inside a dimension, the hook will move. And frankly, it's not terribly accurate on any tape measure. So my word of advice is if you're doing any critical measuring with a tape measure like this, is I usually add two inches and I start at two inches and we'll hold it down along the length of the cut and then I'll add two inches to my dimension at the other end and that's where I'll make the mark. So just to, uh, you know, when you're getting into, some, some of these are off 16th of an inch or more. So just be careful. Uh, in the old days, we used these folding rules. Uh, I still use them. Um, they're kind of neat, and uh, they don't fall off of things when you're trying to stretch them out. They're limited to most of them. You can get a six-foot rule. But what's neat about these is this little end thing, the uh, sliding extension. What's great with those, you can use it to measure depth of something if you have a, a recess that you need to measure. They're also really good if you need to set depth on a router or a table saw or saw blade. Um, so that's why those are, those are helpful to have around or this type of ruler. And then obviously just your flat metal rules. Uh, I showed the front and the back of this one. It's nice if you do get a metal rule or any, even a plastic rule, put a piece of cork on the back of it so it doesn't scratch stuff up. Uh, when you're looking at a rule, uh, you get what you pay for. You want to try to find something that's engraved, uh, that's not just printed, uh, because they'll be just typically they'll be that much more accurate. So spend a little. You don't have to spend a lot, but spend a little bit more. So scales. Uh, we all have these scales here. Uh, this is the one I think from Micromark and. Uh, I know Walters has one. There's a bunch of different brands. They're pretty much all the same. Uh, and these typically are indeed uh, etched. So you can, but it's tough, you know, getting down in that three inches on H HO scale or any inches on N gauge. So, um, but they're very helpful in terms of figuring out spacing, things like that. So we should all have them. I'm going to take, just take a little sidebar here on perceived scale versus real scale. Um, this is a great chart, and I'll put the uh, link for this up on in, in the chat tonight. Uh, this is the Mount Albert scale lumber basswood reference chart, and this is just one page. There are six pages overall in this, and what's really great about it is it shows the actual size and then all the different scales, what those sizes will represent. So even here, if you look at, for argument's sake, an HO scale, a two by four, its actual dimension is 23 thousandths by 46 thousandths. And that's not even nominal. That's true two inch by four inch, which you don't build. And my point here is that a lot of times that to build in real scale, it's not going to look real. It's going to be too small. People will not be able to 
understand what it is that you're doing. So uh, here's the link. And again, I'll put this in the chat when this when I'm done to tonight. So here's just some examples, a nominal two by four. I actually use three by eights when I build. Um, they just look to the eye, they look better. Uh, and just some other interesting things like a three tab shingle exposure. You know, three tab shingles in HO scale are 16th of an inch showing just over 16th of an inch, 564 for a stair rise. Metal hand railings, which are typically done at inch and a half, inch and a quarter pipe, which is like 1.6 inches outside diameter. Um, it's a 64th of an inch. So really you'd be using wire. Uh, when I do handrails and stuff like that, I tend to use 032, which is a 32nd or close to it. So, uh, Again, just it's a visual reference. And then finally, think about this. If you're using a half millimeter pencil, which we all think, you know, a drafting pencil or whatever, to mark stuff, it's actually an inch wide in O scale and three and a quarter inches wide in N scale. So that's why a lot of carpenters actually use knives. They don't use pencils. Uh, if, so I, I, a lot of times I'll use a scalpel actually to mark stuff when I want to cut. So... Just things to keep in mind. Squares, there's lots of different squares out there. Uh, drywall squares are great if you're doing bench work, uh, you're cutting large pieces. You can you can pick these up, usually cheap or at surplus places or whatever. It's good to have it along, uh, have it around the shop, cutting sheet goods or whatever. The uh, leg on the left there will is actually behind the rule so it hangs over the edge so you can use it to square things up and, and stuff like that it's just a good purchase to have in your shop framing squares are the i built scenery for years just using a framing square and a tape measure uh if you've ever wondered what all the numbers are on a framing square well that's all there so you can do uh rafters uh, hip valley rafters, all you know, jack rafters, all that stuff. So, uh, most of the time, a lot of uh, framing squares now won't even have those on them. But this is a roofer square, and uh, you can see you have a tongue on the right, and that's typically an inch and a half wide, and then the actual blade is two inches wide. So, that's also good just for having a couple of dimensions you can just trace out. Speed squares are great, they're cheap. Use them to cut two bys and one by. If you're doing framing work, uh, you can see that on the left side of this picture, there's a, a leg that actually can hook over the edge of the wood, and then you use the the other uh, one of the other faces to cut either a 90 degree cut or a 45 degree cut. This is a speed, but specifically called the speed square. Um, you can see you can figure out angles, and the angles are all based around this little notch that's up in here. So if you were to put this at a point and then take a line down here, that would be a 70 degree angle. So they're really useful to have around. Uh, and again, very inexpensive. Tri squares, and that's how you spell it because you use tri squares to try and see if your wood is square. Uh, again, with any of these, there you can buy cheap or you can buy decent. What you want to do to test any square is to lay it on a on a surface. Uh, and again, you'll overhang the edge of the surface, scribe a line, and then flip it over and scribe the line again and see if you get the same line. And that's how you know if your square is square. So you really want to do that with any of these squares. Uh, this is a, a wooden handled one, which is they're pretty typical. This is a neat little square that I actually found and I use quite a bit. What's neat about it, a couple of things. One, it has a little tab at the end here. So it keeps it from falling off of the wood if you're going along a piece of wood, if you want to scribe a line. And then it has these holes in it, which you can use to score lines at different distances off of your reference point. And also you can use it to set angles. You can see up here, there's all kinds of angles, 45, 30, 22 and a half. And again, that's all off of this point down here at the end of the handle. 
double squares. Um, you can find these all over. I really love using these. I have a little, these are mine. I have a four inch and a six inch double square. It's kind of like a combination square, but without all the bulk. And again, you can slide these so that you can set depths on things, or you can use it to scribe lines. If you want to inset a line a half an inch, even on a curve, you can use these because the body overlaps so you can get to the center of the blade. Machinist squares, uh, I use these for cutting. I won't cut on these squares because they're these are engraved, but I'll use these. This is what I'll do my cutting on if I'm cutting styrene sheet or something. And again, there's all different sizes of those that are available. These are cool little things. And again, if you're scribing, you need to scribe distances. Uh, this is the Incra one. This is a little more expensive than this one here. This, this is one I found on Amazon. But you can see there's all these holes punched, and this has actually 60 or 132nd spacing. So you can set different if you need to scribe lines that are parallel. Uh, really good to have around and pretty inexpensive, really. Old fashioned combination square. So uh, if you're using these, you slide this a 12 inch blade. You can just pull this off of the blade and just use the head to set a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle. The full kits used to come with a center finder as well as a protractor so you could set angles into it. And here's a little one that I have out in the shop in my garage shop. So I use this a lot and they all have this little scribing pin most of them have a scribing pin on it you can pull out and use to mark wood. So that's kind of squares in that. This uh, tool of the week this week, and other people have talked about these, uh, one, two, three blocks. Um, great just to uh, use them as weights. I use them as, I use them over on my mill to set up stuff. They're great for jigging stuff. One of the things that I never saw till recently is uh oh yeah well you can get them either metric or or sae um sae they're three eighths by 16 threads so you can use them to to make up you know hold downs and things like that uh this is something i found this is a kit from taylor toolworks i had never seen these are block attachments so if you have a couple of blocks you can use these little gizmos and hold them together to make up little jigs, either 90 degree jigs or offset jigs, or if you want to do some bending or something like that, or heat forming, just really kind of neat. And we'll get back to the tailor thing in a, in a second here. So that's the tool of the week. You can pick them up for about 20 bucks a set. Uh, so just something to have. And like I say, they're, it beats stealing the hand weights from my wife's gym area in the basement. So. <laughs> So tonight's website, speaking of Taylor Tools, um, here's Taylor Tools. And this is where a lot of, you can find a lot of these. The reason I want to point this out though, is under the tools tab, and they have some really neat stuff for carpentry and, and other machining stuff, but they sell blemished and cosmetic seconds. So you can find some really good quality squares, rulers and things like that but they're blems, so they'll have a finished defect or something. They're, they're, from what I've heard from them, they don't compromise in terms of how they're etched or anything like that. But uh, so it's taytools.com. And uh, it's just a, uh, a really neat site to kind of poke around. They've got a lot of neat stuff on there. So that's kind of it. Next week, we're going to look at toolbox essentials, uh, some useful and some weird tools that I have around that I found that I use when I'm uh, working around the shop. So back to you, Jim. I'll stop sharing. Anybody have any questions for Bob? Well, Bob, I'm really impressed. I, the one that I liked the most was, uh, I think you called it the Tri-Square. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the name. <laughs> well, I always thought it was a tri square TRI because you could use it three different ways, but really it's it I look actually looked it up. Uh it's TRY, tri square because you try to see if things are square. I'll so, be damned. There you go. Thanks so much. 
and I'll put that uh, link up for that uh, lumber chart because that okay. really is very, very helpful to do conversions for just about anything uh, on the layout. So I'll get that up right away. That's great. Thanks so much, Bob. Thank you. Really